uli at mga sumusubaybay dito sa ating programa sa Toti Speaks. Antok sa inyo nakatipon ng channel. Ito yung lingkod Toti Casino. At uh, itutuloy po natin ang ating paksa sa araw na ito. Patukul po dito sa Medical Martial Law. Ito na po yung ikapangatlong bahagi ng ating talakayan. Patukul nga dito sa Medical Martial Law na mismo ang nagsulat po nito ay walang iba ko di si uh, Nicanor Perlas. Makapanayan po natin siya ngayon. At uh, ang inyong lingkod po ay nagbuo ng isang summary no? ng ating napag-usapan ng mga nakaraang dalawang linggo. At ito po ang ating naibuo. Uh, mapakikita niyo sa PowerPoint slide na po ito na ipaghanda po niyo yung lingkod. Uh, sa susunod na slide, makikita niyo po rito ang uh, Republic Act 11332. No? Ito po ang uh, binabasihan ng ating uh, pamalaan o tungkol dito sa paano nila ipinatupad ang uh, ito mga ito mga hakbangin na bigyan tayo ng mga quarantine controls. Ito po ang tinatawag nila an act providing the policies and prescribing the procedures on surveillance and response to notifiable disease, epidemics and health events of the public health concern and appropriate funds thereof repealing for the purpose Act Number no. Three Five Seven Three, otherwise known as the Law on Reporting of Communicable Disease. At sabi nga po nila dito, ay nakahighlight nga dito na marami dito sa deklarasyon ng kanilang polisya na kumuha sila ng effective response system in compliance with the 2005 International Health Regulations or IHR of the World Health Organization. Pero kung babasihan po natin, next slide please. Kung mabasihan po natin sa ating saligang batas, nakasaad po dito under Article 2, the Declaration of the Principles and State Policies, that the Philippines is a democratic and republican state. That the sovereignty resides in the people. Tayo po yan. And all the government authority emanates from them. Ibig sabihin po, ang kapangyarihan po ng ating pamalar ay nag, nag, uh, nagmumula sa ating kakayanan, sa ating uh, sambayanan. Hindi po mismo ang 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 kapangyarihan ay nasa pamalan lamang kundi sa ating mga mamamayang Pilipino. At dagdag po dito, uh, sa ilalim tong Artikulo 2, uh, yung Section 7 na nagsasabi that the state shall pursue an independent foreign policy. In its relations with other states, the paramount consideration shall be national sovereignty, territorial integrity, national interest, and the right to self-determination. Ibig sabihin po niyan, Meron tayong sariling kakayanan na tayo mismo ang mga ngasir. Hindi yung matay yung susunod-sunuran lamang sa mga kautusan, katulad nga nung nakinabasa natin kanina sa World Health Organization, meron din tayong kakayanan para unawain ito. At ayon dito sa, ituloy po natin ang ating, uh, next slide please. Ayon po dito sa Republic Act number no. 11332 ng uh, the the revised implementation rules and regulations of the uh, of this act on the mandatory reporting next slide please siya sabi po dito na to require public and uh, uh, public and private physicians ito po yung underline natin private physicians and allied med medical personnel to actively participate in this disease surveillance and response ibig kung naka kung naalala nyo, nakapareha po natin ang mga grupo ng uh, Concerned Doctors and Citizens uh, of the Philippines or CDC.ph at tinutulak po nila yung paggamit po ng Ivermectin kontra dito sa COVID-19 at hindi po kailangan tayo magpabakura dahil meron kasing visa. At sinasabi po nga dito sa, sa IRR nito, sa Interplementing Rosary, to respect to the fullest as possible the rights of people to liberty, bodily integrity, and privacy while maintaining and preserving public health and security. Ibig sabihin po dyan, meron pa rin tayong sariling kakayanan na pumili kung anong klaseng uh, pagamutan pwede natin tanggapin. Yan po ang... Toti, Toti, anong Republic Act ito minabasa mo? Uh, Republic Act 11332. 11332, okay. And then you, you can also ano, click the... Ano, ano year yan? Regulis. Sorry? Anong year yan? Uh, 2019. Or 20, no, sorry. Bago. 20, bago lang yan. 2020 or 2020. Bago. Yeah, bago. Okay. Bago Good. lang yan. Okay. So, 
Dito. Pag matrikul natin dito, ayun nga dito sa implementing rules and regulation, nakalagay, nakalagay naman dito ang rule number three, declaration of public health emergency. No? Ayon nga dito mm -hmm. prioridad ng uh, Secretary of Health. No? Sa, due to ila, subject to the section number two of these rules, the Secretary of Health shall have the authority to declare epidemics of the national or international concern which shall be included but are not limited to a epidemic link with nationally or internationally distributed pandemic like the COVID-19, cases of exotic disease acquired locally, katulad ng dengue, disease linked with pathogenicity, siguro masasabi na natin katulad ng mga SARS, tsaka yung mga swine flu, tsaka yung mga bird flu, yung mga ganyan, disease with significant risk of international spread, uh, epidemics associated with health service failure, and epidemics in tourist facilities. And then, sinabi, no declaration by any LGU of an epidemic that constitutes national internet shall be valid. Ay, ibig sabi nila, ang, ang, talaga may authority lang talaga ang, ang pwede magbagdikara. Ay, ang pub lang, ayun, itong Secretary of Health. Ayon dito, ah, sa Republic Act mm -hmm. 1132, in effect, without, without the affirmative, uh, with, with, without, without the written affirmation or approval of the Secretary of Health. So talagang binibigyan ng ma ma mataas sa kapangyarihan. Kaya i-questioning nga natin itong mga isa at italakayan kung ito po ito talaga ay nararapat sa ating saligang batas. At ganoon din sa ilalim po ng Republic Act uh, 7160 o yung tinatawag natin local government code. Dagdag pa niya. Next slide, please. Dagdag pa niya dito sa implementing of the The Secretary of Health may convene the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging or Re-Emerging Infectious Diseases created under Executive Order 168 Series of 2014. Ito po yung sinulat ito ni Pangulong uh, Noy Noy Aquino pa noon. The Interagency Committee on Environmental Health created under Executive Order 489 Series of 1991 or Series of 1991. Panahon pa ito ni uh, Pangulong uh, uh, Cory Aquino or such in interagency bodies or task force as may be created on a site for appropriate response. Uh, for example, the escalation or escalation of, of, of the response. No? Regional counterparts of the IATF, MED, or A other relevant interagency bodies and task forces or committees may likewise be called upon to ensure the alignment of national directives with local action. So, ito po yung tinutukoy na executive order. Executive order po ay isang kautosan na nilagda ng Pangulong na halal ng kapanuhanan na yun. So ito Executive Order 168 ay sa kapanahon po ni Pangulong uh, Noy Noy Aquino samantala is Executive Order 489 ay sa sa pangasiwas sa pamahalaan ni Pangulong Cory Aquino. Next slide please. Ngayon, kung babasihan po natin dito sa World Health Organization no. Uh, next slide please. Makikita po dito na sinasabi dito sa kanilang website as of June 30, 2021, WHO has evaluated the following vaccines against COVID-19 and have met the necessary criteria for safety and efficacy. Katulad ng AstraZeneca, which is already available here. Johnson & Johnson, wala pa yun dito. Moderna, pagdating pa lang yan dito. Yung Pfizer, BioNTech, nandito na po yan. Yung Sinopharm, tsaka Sinovac, I think nandito na po yan sa ating bansa. Dagdag pa nga dito sa kanilang website. Next slide, please. Na if you experience an immediate and severe allergic reaction to the first dose of COVID-19 vaccine, you should not receive additional doses of the vaccine. Huh? It's extremely rare for severe health reactions to be directly caused by the vaccines. Kaya nga, <laughs> kaya nga, pinapapala, makukuha kayo ng mga painkillers katulad ng para, pa, paracetamol, ay baka magkaroon ng mas malalang na side effect. Hindi nila nirecommend na yan. Dahil meron pa doon silang mga hindi pa kinikilalang iba pang side effect nitong uh, itong bakuna no next slide please at dagdag pa dito sa ulat na ito na si Osamila while covid-19 vaccine will prevent serious illness and death pinahayag nila we still don't know we still do not know the extent to which it keeps you from being infected and passing the virus on to others the more we allow the virus the more opportunity the virus will change ibig sabihin tinitiyak nga nila dito na hindi pa rin subok itong bakuna na ito, kahit ano pa man siya. Okay? 
Kaya binimintay natin yung social distancing, pagsusot ng mask, at yung mga face shield, at paghuhugas ng kamay, at lahat pa ng iba. So in other words, hindi ganun pa tayo ligtas. Samantala, next slide please. Ito mga kating mga nakakapanayam ng mga doktor minsan tungkol sa, ano, sa ivermectin. Ay makita naman dito yung mga side effects ng ivermectin. Ito po yung magagaling makukuha niyo po ito sa drugs.com. No? At dito, sinasabi, next slide please. Ang mga pangkariniwan na side effects. Next slide please. Okay. Ay uh, katulad ng panghihilo. Or uh, ito nga, sir, along with its needed effects, ivermectin may cause some unwanted effects, although not all of these side effects may occur. Kasi nga, matagal na po itong ivermectin. Next slide, please. At uh, ito nga, sir, sabi nga nila na dito ay meron dito yung mga paglalagnat or skin rash, pagsasakit ng mga butot-buto, ganyan. Ito yung pinakakomon, uh, rapid heartbeat, painful tender, so, yung mga madalang, yung pagsakit ng ulo, or yung diarrhea, or dizziness, or skin rash. Yan, yan ang mga madadalang na epekto nitong ano. Uh, next slide, please. At meron din silang sinasabi dito sa mga general coverage. Next slide, please. Ngayon, marami sa inyo nagsasabi sa amin, kailangan ko daw ma-interview si uh, Cebu Governor Gwen Garcia. Ito pong nangyari po sa kanya noong nakaraang taon. Awa, na sa po ay na, na, nawalan po ng dalawang kapatid sa loob ng isang linggo. Uh, ang mayor ng uh, Barili Town ay namatay nga ng COVID-19. Sa may Chong Hua Hospital sa Cebu City, nung kinamugahan, yung buwan, yung, yung buwan ng ika, dala, ika pito, pito ng Septyembre, no? kinamugahan, wala pang limang araw, ang kanyang isang kapatid na dating mayor ng uh, Dumamjug, si Nelson Garcia, ay siya rin namatay. So dalawang kapatid, ni Governor Gwen Garcia ang namatay. At uh, marami sa inyo nagsasabi sa amin na ma 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 sana makapanayam namin. Ito po na aking nak nakuha. No? Next slide. Pakinggan po natin itong pahayag po ni uh, Gwen Garcia nung siya po ay nakipagharap po sa tanggapan po ni uh, Pangulong Duterte sa Malacanya. Uh, Roxanne, please show the video. Um, last night, after the PDP Laban National Council meeting, where I delivered the welcome remarks as governor of Cebu, since the National Council meeting was held right here in Cebu, we flew to Manila. With me was Secretary Michael Dino, Presidential Assistant for the Visayas, Dr. Jean Loreche, our chief pathologist at the Department of Health, Edmund, Mr. Edmund Liu of the Project Balik Buhay, and General Mel uh, Feliciano of the, uh, the chief implementer for the Visayas. And we reached uh, Malacanang at around uh, six, past six. We had to subject ourselves to the health protocols such as the rapid test and all. So we finally saw the president at uh, around 7 in the evening. And uh, he was accompanied by Secretary Anyo, Secretary Duque, Secretary Harry Roque, Secretary Delphine Lorenzana, and um, Secretary Galvez, as well as, of course, Senator Bong Go. And the president stated that it seems that in Cebu, you are not following the IATF guidelines. So what is this? You have to follow. Although, on the same breath, he also said that I do recognize the help of the local government units in the implementation of policies and uh, it is the local government units that are actually on the ground. The president, having served as mayor himself of the city of Davao for 27 years, I uh, know that local governance is close to his heart and he understands how it is 
running a city or a province. So I explained. I believe that for most of our um, our um, fellow Filipinos, you are already aware of the difference. But for those who do not, may I repeat, EO17, uh, subsequently supported by a provincial ordinance, states that upon arrival, ROFs and OFWs are swabbed, and this is what I told the president, and then they are brought to the hotel, they wait for two days for Cebuanos. If uh, they are ne tested negative, they go home to their LGUs, and they are swabbed again on the seventh day. They continue the required 14-day quarantine at home. For non Cebuanos, we ask them to go back to their own provinces, where they shall subject themselves to the health protocols of that particular province. I said that we have not, the way I see it, Mr. President, we are in fact innovating to make it more effective for us. I also pointed out that we saw a steady increase of uh, cases after the five-day testing rule was implemented, where we, the uh, returning Filipinos would first be brought to the hotel and they would only be tested on the fifth day. So that when we implemented by March 31st, going back to the old procedure of testing upon arrival, we saw the steady decrease of cases. And I said, in fact, in Cebu, we have made it even stricter in the sense that it is not a single swab. We swab twice. Because once the returning Filipino goes back to his uh, home or his family, he is swabbed again on the seventh day. And then I brought out the humanitarian aspect. I said, Mr. President, these OFWs do not come home to have a good time, actually. Sometimes they do not even have enough cash to pay for the ticket. They borrow money or do a cash advance. And then they come home because there is a reason. It's in times of emergency. It's either that there's a member of the family who is very sick or someone has died and they're just trying to come home to pay their last respects and say their last goodbyes. We have to look at the humanitarian aspect here because I know how much you love the OFWs, who we all agree are our unsung heroes. They work abroad, they go through so much hardship in order that they may make the lives of their family a little better. And in fact, they are the single, pre-COVID, they were the single biggest dollar earner for the country. Now, while this new policy would put further strain on the OWA, because instead of paying for two days, this policy of IITF requires a 10-day stay in the hotel, which means that would uh, multiply by five the cost. Worst is the strain on returning Filipinos where there is no OWA. And they would have to pay, and they will not be paying the discounted rates of OWA. In Cebu, it's 1-4. But they would have to pay the standard hotel rates of 3,000 to 5,000. So 30,000 to 50,000, you know, that amount of cash can do so much to help their family, and yet they spend it in the hotel. I could see how the president really felt for the OFWs and the returning Filipinos. But he asked for Dr. Uh, for um, Secretary Duque's opinion and Secretary Duque started talking about variants and it's really dangerous and you know even if they are tested you know they can still be it can be a false negative and then when they go home they may be trans you know there's the transmission and I said but I said I'm sorry but if you do not believe the first test and that's RT-PCR then why must we conduct the seventh another test on the seventh day what makes the first they test 
different from the seventh day test if you do not believe that if a person is negative that is possibly false negative what about on the seventh day well you wait for that stretch how do we monitor these uh, returning filipinos we do not have enough hotel staff how do we know they will not have interaction with hotel staff and if they're in fact infected they could already cause what you are afraid of transmission well you know well secretary anio said you know well it, you, you are probably showing that you're, it's working but what if other regions will do the same and nobody will follow anymore because they will have their own way well my answer to that was shouldn't it be the other way like if you see something working wouldn't it be worth it to study it and perhaps find out why it's working and see if this could perhaps be applied to other regions if you were to be very very strict about it we are only arguing about the hotel stay which is a heavy financial burden and a heavy emotional burden on our both OFWs and ROFs away from their families especially in times of emergency the very reason why they came home you know sec um, Dr. Jean Loreche showed came complete with her figures and showed that Cebu has been able to manage the variant that you had first segregated as P.3 which later on they called the Central Visayas variant. We're, we are so special to them, really. Very special. You know, in other places, it's called the UK variant, South African variant. It's called uh, now the Indian variant. But in the entire universe, there is only one regional variant, and that's the Central Visayas variant. Because they were saying, you know, this can be like Indian variant and all. See, Dr. Jean showed that we were more, you know, we have been more religious in sending samples. And in the samples that were sent, there was only one that was really confirmed as a UK variant. However, we were able to show that testing upon arrival showed a 0.30 positivity. So that 0.30 were found to be positive you see if we were only test them in the seventh day what would have happened i also said because they were insisting that it should be on the seventh day because it's the strongest you have the highest viral load so i just asked the very simple question if we believe that everybody should be tested on the seventh day are we to presume that everybody who arrives every day coming from different countries subjected to different environment are all to be reckoned from day one that they could have been already infected per day one because we are all counting them as day one i said what if someone arrived and he's already day five but we did not test him because we'll have to test him on the seventh day by that time he would have already passed his highest viral load and he could already have been talking with the hotel staff or for all you know might have escaped from his hotel room to go to his family i mean these are just very simple questions but they say that our science tells us that you know it should be done this way so dr loreche said because Dr. Doc Duque, um, Secretary Duque emphasized to the president that, you know, variants can be, might be very um, highly transmissible and very lethal. It could be, you know, very virulent. So it was Dr. Jean Loreche who said, viruses mutate all the time, Mr. President. That's the nature of the virus. And that is why there will always be several variants variants and that it is all about being able to contain and being able to manage in the end the president advised uh, secretary duque to study our 
procedure here and see if uh, this could possibly be a good way or innovation that could be adapted. Secretary Duque at first said that, uh, ah, yes, we will discuss this, but uh, we will, we are made, or words to that effect, but our minds are made up. Or, or, so um, the president had to repeat to, to study. So they were given until Thursday. Toti, walang voice. Papahayag po ni uh, Cebu Governor uh, Gwen, Gwendolyn Garcia. Uh, po ay uh, nagbigay ng kanyang ulat sa kanyang mga mamamayan sa, sa probinsya ng Salalawigan ng Cebu. Pagkatapos po yun na, na nakaharap si Pangulong na Rodrigo Duterte sa Malacanang noong ikauna ng Hunyo. Makaraan ng dalawang linggo, ito lang kamakailan, mga dalawang araw na karaan, ay pinulong po siya sa ito sa Senado at uh, ito na po ang naging kanyang pahayag nang siya po ay uh, dininig dito sa Senado. Pakinggan po natin ito. Governor, when uh, are you still uh, on? Yes, 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 yes. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Gov Gwen, uh, are you aware of the uh, of the recent pronouncement of uh, from, from Secretary Roque? that the President has ordered LGU Cebu to, to follow IADF quarantine protocol for OFWs and ROFs. May I get your comment and reaction on this? Uh, yes, Senator Wong. I am aware of that. And um, at the outset, allow me to say that I have only deep respect for the, for the President and the office that he represents. As governor of the province of Cebu, I am also mindful of the fact that a greater majority of the Cebuano support the president. In fact, in the last presidential election, President Duterte got a majority of 1.2 million votes, a margin of 1.2 million votes over his closest rival. So with that in mind, Allow me also to state that I also have great respect for the rule of law. In Cebu, we are not only talking about an executive order, but a provincial board ordinance that was passed by our provincial board unanimously, adopting the protocols of my executive order. As we all know, a provincial ordinance, unless declared ultra vires in a proper court, is the local law of the land. In accordance with Republic Act 7160, otherwise known as the local government code. And so, out of deep respect to the president, I shall be asking our provincial board members to revisit the ordinance and this time to invite the technical advisors or medical experts that Secretary Duque continues to refer to, to invite over to the province of Cebu so that they could present their own data. You see, in the last meeting that we had with the president, the President had requested Secretary Duque to present a critique of the Cebu Protocol. We had not been furnished a copy of that critique. And so we are unaware, particularly, where we could go wrong. So we respect the opinion of the medical experts of Secretary Duque. And uh, they will be kindly invited, including members of the IATF who may wish to uh, accept our invitation before the provincial board so that they shall be guided accordingly. A revisit of the ordinance I shall be requesting because I cannot unilaterally set aside the implementation of an ordinance lest I be accused of the reliction of duty. 
but that is as much as I can do, request the provincial board to study the ordinance after the medical experts' critique and opinions shall be lengthily presented and discussed here in the province of Cebu at the Capitol Social Hall. I am right now extending that invitation and I am glad that uh, I heard Secretary Duque himself saying he is open for adjustments. I heard Secretary Anu say that about the same thing. And so let us reach out and um, try to meet common ground. I had presented our data. Secretary Duque keeps on insisting that uh, Dr. Salvania presents his, but I am no, it's out of my hands. This is a provincial board ordinance that the provincial board has tasked me to implement as the chief executive. Okay. Um, thank you, Madam uh, Governor. Uh, Pwede po ba natin hingan ng uh, reaction ni Secretary Duque regarding uh, governor's uh, regarding gover governor's uh, Gwen uh, statement? President, Mr. President, yeah, uh, with the permission of Senator Bong? Yes, Madam Senator. Uh, okay, just, 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 a, just, a, yes, just a clarification, Mr. President. Uh, Gov Gwen, ang ibig sabihin ho ba neto, hindi niyo susundin yung IATF protocols that was ordered by the President? Ang ibig sabihin nito, Senator Pinay, right now there is an ordinance enforced in the province of Cebu. Yes, government, which is not what uh, is being uh, ordered by IATF, right? So technically, you're not going to follow the IATF protocol, correct? Well, until this ordinance, as I said, would be declared ultra vires, ultra vires in the proper court. Because we are put in a legal bind here. Okay, so, the para, IATM what, what guidelines. You're saying, yeah, so what yeah. you're saying, walang bearing yung pronouncement ng president dun sa protocol that should be followed by Cebu. Correct? I mean, you are, that is the consequence. Sorry, you're, right? you're, putting, you're putting the words into my mouth. I had premised my statement by saying that I have only the deepest respect for the president. And I continue to support the president even as the greater majority of Cebuanos support him. It was uh, what I wish to point out too, that we also have the deepest respect for the rule of law. And that is what each of our oaths of office demand of us. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Senator Bong. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay. Go ahead, Sir. your response. Yes, thank you, Mr. President and uh, uh, Mr. Senator uh, Bong. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the uh, provincial governor uh, for her open invitation. Uh, I'll take it up. Uh, I will present that to the IETF that there's a standing uh, invitation for our... Uh, some uh, select members of the IATF and also the group of experts uh, to be able to uh, present uh, the critique that uh, they put together in response to the presidential directive last uh, May 31st. So uh, we will arrange for uh, that particular uh, meeting where we will be asking for an opportunity to present the uh, critique. We will send also uh, the good governor the critique uh, uh, this afternoon or at the latest tomorrow morning. And uh, my apologies that uh, uh, you were not uh, furnished the uh, critique. Uh, but uh, with my reassurance, we will uh, provide you uh, such. But uh, certainly, we would love to get our experts to uh, to visit uh, Cebu province and uh, to present their uh, own data, why uh, they are uh, of uh, certainty that the protocol 
that is nationally adopted is the way to go. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. President. Secretary Ayo, go ahead. Uh, I just like to react on the uh, legality on the uh, resolution or ordinances passed by the uh, uh, provincial government. The uh, IETF resolutions on health protocols are binding and mandatory. The rules and policies of local government units are expected to conform. The IETF was created pursuant to Executive Order Number 168. An executive order is an issuance of the president pursuant to his ordinance power, which, according to Book 3, Title 1, Chapter 2, Section 2 of the Admin Code of 1987, refers to acts of the president providing for rules for the general or permanent character in implementation or execution of constitutional or statutory powers. In other words, executive orders state mandatory requirements for the executive branch and have the effect of law. They are issued in relation to a law passed by Congress or based on powers granted to the President in the Constitution and must be consistent with those authorities. And since local government units are under the executive branch, they are expected to follow the command of the national government exercised through the executive power of the chief executive. Hence, no amount of an executive order or ordinance from the province can therefore defeat this power of the president rooted on the constitutional precept considering that the constitution is the fundamental and highest law of the land. So in other words, hindi mo po kailangan ng ultra virus because at the first instance, the, the uh, ordinance or the resolution is in the first place opposing the resolution that has been approved by the president. So, you know, po, uh, the comment, Mr. Mr. President. Chairman, just a point Mr. of clarification. Go ahead. Yes. Also, in effect, what you're saying is the president can override a provincial yes. board resolution or a municipal ordinance. That's what you're saying, uh, Secretary Anya. Yes, Your Honor. Being the chief executive and the head of the executive branch as mandated in the Constitution. Via an executive order. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. President, if I may, Mr. President, the IATF was created, yes, by virtue of Executive Order 168, signed by then President Noinoy Aquino. The chairman of the IATF is the Secretary of Health. Now, under the local government code, which is a Republic Act 7160. And we all know, lawyers here would know the order of importance between a national law, an executive order, and a provincial or municipal ordinance. But I am quoting a national law, Republic Act 7160, which ensures local autonomy in accordance also with the Constitution. And re Section 105 states that in cases of epidemics, pestilence, and other widespread public health dangers, the Secretary of Health may, upon the direction of the President and in consultation with the local government unit concerned, temporarily assume direct supervision and control over health operations in any local government unit for the duration of the emergency, but in no case exceeding a cumulative period of six months. With the concurrence of the local government unit concerned, the period for such direct national control and supervision may be further extended. But be that as it may, Mr. President, this is a legal issue, which I do not wish to delve into. I am very grateful to Secretary Duque for uh, acceding to our request that, in fact, the medical experts that um, give these recommendations from which IATF policies spring are ready to face the provincial board 
so that the provincial board shall be able to judge in a balanced manner. So we would welcome your presence, all of your uh, medical experts, uh, Secretary Duque, once the provincial board shall issue that invitation. And by the way, this is not a mere resolution. This is an ordinance. There's a difference. Uh, Mr. President. Mr. President. Okay, uh, thank, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I hope we can resolve this concern, issue, and find common ground. Iisa lang naman po ang layunin ng bawat isa kung paano tayo makakatulong sa ating mga kababayan. Siyempre, of course, yung kalusugan. No? Uh, uh, siguro mo maayos po natin ito sa maayos na paraan. So, that's all, Mr. President. Thank you, Governor Gwen. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Senator Villa. Next is Senator Pangilinan. Uh, you have 10 Mr. minutes. President. Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President. Yes, uh, Senator Gordon. Just as a follow-through, if I may, with the permission of Senator Pangilinan. Go ahead, like, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Just to support the position of Governor Gwen, who is a very good friend of mine and their family. Let me just say that I support it because principally the Constitution, Article 10, provides that the executive power shall be vested in the president. Of the, of the Philippines, Mr. President. And it says, it shall exercise general supervision over local governments, provinces with respect to component cities and municipalities, and cities and municipalities with respect to component barangays, shall ensure that the acts of their component units are within the scope of their prescribed powers and functions, Mr. President. Now, when we go to Section 05, which has been cited by Governor Gwen Garcia, it says, direct national supervision and control by the Secretary of Health. In cases of epidemics, pestilence, and we may classify this situation as pestilence and epidemic, and other widespread public health dangers, the Secretary of Health may, upon the direction of the President and in consultation with the local government unit concerned, temporarily assume direct supervision and control over health operations, which is only correct in any local government unit for the duration of the emergency, but in no case exceeding a cumulative period of six months. With the concurrence of the local government unit concerned, the period for such direct national control and supervision may be further extended. Now, Mr. President, Cebu is an island. It is not contiguous to other provinces. Walang border yan, a land border sa ibang provincia. Para makapasok ka galing sa Bohol, mag-ferry ka, pwede sitayin yung ferry sa Bohol, pagpasok at paglabas. Ganun rin po sa makamay nilaan, yung mga airport, yung mga seaport, maharang yan. So, pag sinabi ng local government, and I've been a mayor, kaya nilang gawin. And in this particular case, sabi ni Governor Garcia, lahat ng provincial board, lahat ng mayor, lahat ng congressman ng Cebu, ay pinanalagutan nila na kailangan talaga because of the cultural imperative na yung mga uh, kanilang mga OFW na nagpapakahirap sa ibang basa, uuwi. At minsan lang nila makikita sa isang taon o dalawang taon yung kanilang pamilya. In the wisdom of the local government, dapat payagan yung mga yan. Provided sagot nila na talagang hihigpitan yung mga protocol na nakamaskara, naka, nakamask, naguhugas ng kamay at lumalayo. Besides, Mr. President, hindi ko naman pinamaliit. Ako po ay nasa Red Cross. Ilan po ba ang namamatay sa atin? Hindi, we ain't done so bad, Mr. President. Marami sa atin guma, uh, gumagaling. Uh, at uh, nakikita naman natin. Lalo na kung susundin yung ating gagawin na paghihigpit. Naniniwala ko kakayanin ng Cebu po yan. Hindi ako nagpapakislap sa Cebu. I just find it na kailangan ang objective ng bayan natin ngayon. Mapawi yung COVID at pagkatapos, even bago pa mapawi yan, makapagtrabaho. Pwede naman magtrabaho ngayon dito sa Manila, basta nakamaskara ka. Nakamaskara o kaya meron kang tinatawag na uh, nag-iingat ka sa lalapit sa tao, hindi ka nagsishake hands at lumalayo ka sa kumpulang. Pwede paanda rin ng mga pabrika, basta nakagadyan ang mga tao. Wala namang pipigil dyan at hindi naman mamamatay ang tao, basta-basta kung susundin nila yan. Palagi ko, ang kinakatakutan ng Secretary of Health ay yung tinatawag natin mga variants. 
Pero nakikita ko, ang namamatay sa atin compared with America, compared with Europe, compared with everybody else, ni wala pang 2% ang tinatamaan ng COVID dito sa Pilipinas. Na 1.1 plus million tayo, ang population natin ay 110,000, 110 million. Ang namamatay ay about 22,000 ang namamatay. So para makapaghanap buhay, para makita ng mga kababayan natin, yung mga yan, ay eh dapat payagan. Una, pang nakapagdalawang bakuna naman na sa ibang bansa, ay eh dapat papasukin na yan. At pagkatapos sa seven days sa bahay, mag-test. Pwede po yan. Hindi naman po ito masabahan yan. Eh. Magagawa naman po yan. Eh. At kung ikaw ay nakapag-test sa ibang bansa, kailangan mag-test ka uli dito kung testing. Dahil ako may experience ako dyan, sinabi ko na rito sa mga kaibigan ko sa Cebu, na pag kahit na ikaw nagpa-test nagpa sa, sa lugar na kakaalisan mo, pagdating mo, pwede kang makapulot ng sakit doon sa aeroplano o doon sa airport na pinagalingan mo at magkakasakit ka, hindi maahagip ng testing yan. Abot yan ng at least 5 or 7 days. Kaya dapat on the 7 day, hang hanggang doon, pwede silang ma-quarantine at pag sila ay nag-negative, pwede na silang i-quarantine continuation doon sa kanilang barangay subject to the block leader or the puruk leader nababantayan sila doon at subject na magagawa nila yung mask. Kaya ng Cebu yan. Alam ko, kaya nila yan. Nagkakaisa yung mga Cebu yan. At saka hindi lang yan. Mga Buhol, kaya rin yan. Yung mga island uh, provinces, kaya yan. So my position, Mr. President, is I've often heard some of our leaders say federal government. Eh sa federal government ng Amerika, ah, kung ayaw ng New York sundin yung presidente ng Amerika, meron sila sariling batas, gagawin nila yan. Sa Massachusetts, gagawin nila yan. Sa California, gagawin nila yan. Because that is the spirit of federalism. Local autonomy. And we may as well practice local autonomy, not just say it, but do it. Of course, there will be a risk. If, that, if something happens, if it goes south, then we can reimpose the restrictions provided for by the president who means well. And therefore, if we can do that, then mas, mag, magkakaroon tayo ng safety sa ating mga kababayan. I just want to make sure na yung mga tourist establishments may bubble, makapasok na sa Cebu. Yung mga magtatrabaho, makapasok na basta meron silang mask at ginagawa yung mga protocols. At kung talaga naman, nabakunahan na, eh bakit pa natin pipigilin? Pwede pa talaga magkasakit kahit nabakunahan. Kahit na pwede silang maghawa. Pero kaya kailangan nakagamit sila ng protocol na sinasabi ng ating bansa. You know po, Mr. President, with all due respect to Secretary of Health and the President, that is my position and I would just like to support yung mga local folks natin na gusto na talagang makaabante. Kung makita mag-succeed yan, baka magaganahan yung ibang mga local governments na sundin yung mga protocol na ginagawa ng Cebu kung hindi lalagalap yan, malaking bagay yan, makakapagtabaho tayo, makakaaga tayo, makabangon. At ang mangyayari dyan ay masaya pa ang tao natin. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Yan po ang uh, narinig po natin ang uh, naging uh, resulta nung uh, pagdinig dito sa nakaraang uh, araw, uh, dalawang araw nakaraan, nung June 15, dyan po sa Senado. Ngayon po kukuha po tayo ng immediate feedback dito po kay Nicanor Perlas. Patungkol dito sa resulta nito, tapunin natin. Magandang hapon, magandang araw po sa iyo, Nicanor. Uh, magandang hapon naman, Toti. Yeah, uh, na, na, nap, napakinggan natin ang sinabi dito sa, sa Senate hearing, sa meeting sa President. Sa akin perspective, Toti, uh, tamang-tama yung posisyon ni Governor Gwen Garcia. It's very clear na yung 1987 Philippine Constitution, ang, ang legislative history nun ay parang subpuin na any tendency towards one man rule yun yun ang yun ang ano yun ang spirit noon eh kaya ang lakas right. ng local government code at sa constitution is very clear devolution of powers meaningful substantive yun yun ang language ng constitution eh kaya hindi the, the, the intent is to allow and klaro naman sa law six months lang pag may emergency beyond that wala na kasi usually pag uh, pag uh, infectious disease yan, usually that's within that period makikita na yung decline yan. Pero na, sa akin personally na mismanage dito sa Pilipinas yun. So ang, sa akin lang, uh, Toti, yung ginagawa ni Governor Gwen, uh, she's, she's doing a balancing act. And uh, close ally siya ng presidente, 
at the same time, as she said herself, she's also deeply respectful of the law. Yung batas. Lalo na yung saligang batas na yun ang konteksto natin ngayon. Kakagaling na natin sa martial law. If ginawa ito and it's a violation of the law, uh, ano yung nangyari yan, Toti? Unti-unti, nag-slide back tayo towards totalitarian law. Yes. Totalitarianism. Ito yung problema nito eh. Dapat yes. respetuhin nila na klaro sa batas. And six months lang talaga yung powers ng national government in this context. And si Gwen, Governor Gwen, sa, sa kanyang explanation, hindi naman pawala siya sa science of this. Alam niya ito. And, and uh, binibigyan na pagbuting pagsusuri ito. I, I had a chance to to speak with her several months ago with a team of doctors and lawyers and so on. And uh, doon, kinal, kinlaro niya na, for example, yung data nila sa kamatayan sa COVID, yeah. ang tunay na COVID nandun, for example, is only one-third, 30-33% thir- right. of the existing. Kasi because may mga mistakes yung IATF sa, sa mga mandate nila. In fact, uh, ako mismo, yung mga very common, babayaran mo ang COVID debt ng 700,000. An- 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 so there's an incentive to actually fraud, do fraudulent data dyan sa mga debts, sa mga infections, because minonetize nila financially ang reporting sa COVID. That's why halimbawa, for example, even within government itself, ang Philippine Statistics Authority ay nagre-report ng 27,000 deaths in 2020. And DOH is only 9,000 plus, which is for me the more realistic figure. And on top of that, yung DOH figure na yun ay bloated. Kasi yung sa may Philippine Statistics Authority, nag accept sila ng that counts maskin walang test. And ito mga RT-PCR test ay actually some, another source of fraud. That's why binabaan ito ngayon ng CDC, nahuli na sila. And when they reduce the cycle threshold, it's a technical term of amplification, amplification to 28, bagsak ang infection rate sa US. And they're trying to link that to the vaccination when in fact, hindi yun dahil sa vaccination. Dahil sa pag 35 to 45 ang cycle threshold ng RT-PCR test aakyat sa false positive from 95% to 100%, the higher it is. Ganun yung nangyari. And we already pointed this out in April one year ago. And until now, hindi pa binagsak. Informal, uh, informal ko mga interviews sa DOH or people, mga doktor na konektado sa DOH, tinasabi nila cycle threshold natin 35 to 45 Kaya hindi tayo nawawalan doon sa mga high figures, but most of them recovered naman. Kasi false positives nga ang mga karamihan. Kaya para sa akin, from the science of it, wala tayong excess deaths, walang kamatayan sa 2020 na sa COVID, over and above sa five-year average of 2015 to 2019, yun ang tawag doon, walang excess deaths. That means you say, we're dealing with a relatively harmless virus, although may kabanga sa mga L- people, sa senior citizens. But below that, wala talaga. This is just like a conventional flu na kamaramihan, they survive this thing and overreact for some reason. And dapat na, just dapat na, yung mga local governments na namumulatan na, they should actually defend their autonomy from encroaching and continuous and stopping basically control from the national. Tapos, Toti, may isa pang gusto ko bahagi dito. Yung mga vaccination program na na binibigay ngayon, sa US, ang record nitong vaccine deaths, ang kamatayan dahil sa bakuna, is the greatest in the last since vaccination in the last few months as compared to the 30 years of history ng, de- ng vaccine death sa US. Delikado itong vaccine ito kasi this was never approved. This was never tested. It was never meant to control infections. And uh, I just want to kwan- digdag lang dito, uh, Toti, may good news lang na konti na hindi pa, I'm surprised, hindi inannounce ng press. Sa hearings last week, last Wednesday, may congressional hearings na ang lumabas doon, Toti, ang nangyari, si Secretary Duque, sabi niya, na wala silang objections 
na pag ang may, mayroong doktor na nag-prescribe ng ivermectin. Ang ivermectin is totally safe. Although, hindi, I mean, sa experience ng iba, no? So, wala, they're not gonna constant, hindi na kukontestahin yan as long as may prescription yung doktor. So, he can, we can, with that, you can you can make all the death casualties in this country, babagsak yan. One world famous uh, do, pro-vaccine doctor na is now fighting against this COVID vaccines, sabi niya, pag nag-focus tayo sa eat early treatment, focus treatment, and so on, using HCQ at ivermectin and so on, di dapat namatay 85% ng, ng namatay sa US. That's we're talking of 425,000 deaths were due yeah. to mistakes. So, it, ito yung, it, I think ito yung pinaglalabanan ni, uh, ni Governor Wen. Ano ba yung science talaga sa ITF? Tapos, ang isang malaking bagay pa, Toti, sa may congressional hearing na ron, lumabas na yung mga medical society sa Pilipinas ay may unhealthy connection sa mga pharmaceutical companies. Tapos ito mga societies ito ang nag advise sa DOH, karamihan sa kanila may masyadong hindi hands-off connection yan sa mga vaccine companies. So yung advice niya na kukuha ni, ni, Doc, ni, Kwan, ni Secretary Duque ay one-sided. Pro-vaccine for pharmaceutical companies and ang, ang feeling ko, ang position ng DOH is like, uh, lalo nang lumabas yung Fauci emails, klarong-klaro, this so-called pandemic was a scam. It was a consciously created scam. They bio-engineered a bio-weapon in Wuhan. Dito ito sa, may, sa Fauci emails. And then they suppressed all the good uh, preventive uh, early treatment uh, protocols para ma- para pumasok ang lahat na bansa sa mundo sa actual sa vaccination. Yun ang naging, naging agenda. Lumabas na ito, kaya that's why nagkakaroon na ng deal sa, sa Senate ng US for to have Fauci fired and or be charged for criminal offenses for crimes against humanity. It, ito yung kwan, ito yung daloy ngayon kasi lumabas na. And everybody is shocked dun sa US na the Mr. Fauci, the Dr. Fauci, the face of the pandemic is actually a fraud, a criminal the, who colluded to create this uh, pandemic and apektado tayo lahat. Eh medyo, medyo, this is, di, ito yung konteksto dapat na mukhang inusente yung DOH, hindi na intindihan ito, na may ganito, kaya malabo talaga ang sitwasyon. Yeah, D- dalawang bagay, yeah, dalawang, dalawang bagay lumulutang dito sa nating uh, nasaksihan, ano? sa istigo ni uh, Governor Buen Garcia at yung kanyang uh, pagdinig dito sa Senado. Ang una, yeah. ipinakita ni uh, Governor Buen Garcia ang lakas ng local government unit. Pero ito na yes. yung argumento na meron ka kaya na, 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 na magsarili ang kanyang self-determination, self-rule, pang sariling pamangangasiwa, pang sariling pamangangasiwa yeah. ng iyong pamangang yes. lokal magi sa lalawigan right. o sa lungsod. So klarong-klaro yeah. po na ipinahayag niya na hindi siya mismo ang nagtutulak nito, kundi ang kanyang pamamayan. Kaya nga dumaan yes. niya. So, at yan yung dininig na kanyang provincial board. Kaya nga sana sa mga yes. subscribe sa programa nito, at siguro may mga ilan dito eh, nakikinig ng mga uh, pamunuan lokal. No? Sila yung pinaka, pinaka pinuno ng kanilang pamalan lokal, mag sa lalawigan o sa lungsod ay tula ay tuluran o tularan itong ginawa ni Governor Gwen Garcia sa Cebu at kasi nga yung nung napakita ko sa inyo nung nakaraang linggo maraming sa mga rehiyon natin mababa ang hapagkahawaan kaya nga nakikita nga natin ito isang malaking uh, uh, scam hindi ito talaga totoong uh, pandemya lalo na sa ating mm-hmm. kaya nga kung marami sa mga ating mga pamalan lokal ay tularan ang ginawa ni Gwen Garcia Siguro unting-unti na mawawala na itong uh, scandemic na ito. Kundi manini, mananatili na lang siya sa Metro Manila dahil dito na talaga ang malaganap na epekto nito sa dami mm. o labas-pasok dito sa ating uh, malawakang lungsod. No? Pangalawa, mm. banggit mong na lumulutang din itong kaso laban kay Fauci, eh mukhang bibig, ang mukhang bibig ng ating mga naukulan sa ating uh, kakagawaran ng kalusuga sa Department of Health ay inuulit-ulit lang yung sinasabi nga ng WHELP Organization, WHO, mm-hmm. organization, 
At ganoon din yung sinasabi nga ni Fauci. Kaya nga, pag ito nga ay nagkalabasa ng katotoo, eh tila talagang, ano ba talaga? Eh, kayo ba talagang uh, dalubhasa na alam nyo, ang pinagsasabi nyo, alam nyo ba ang pinagkagawa ninyo dito sa ating uh, uh, pamalaan? O talaga kayo nagsusunod-sunod naman? Kaya nawawala yung ating soberano. Nawawala yung ating uh, mm-hmm. nating, uh, self-determination. We're being influenced by foreign policies. That is not really a big mm-hmm. As in other words, nawawala yung pagka-ating independence. No? Mm-hmm. Kaya nga, mm-hmm. ano, ito, yung una, yung lakas ng ating pamalalukan na parang uh, hindi lang basta sa sumusunod sa, sa mga panukala o sa mga patakaran ng ating uh, uh, pabansang pamalaan. At yung pangalawa, yung sarili nating kakayanan na maging sarili tayo at hindi tayo. I would like to get your your comments on this. What course of action would you think that the local government unit should do right now that they would see this happening in Cebu? Second, can there be a class suit filed against the national agencies that have been dictating upon us? Diktatorial na kasi ito eh. Marshall na nga. Mm. Your yes, comments uh, please, Nick. Nick. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll start my comment. Magsisimula ako sa, sa, sa comments ko. Uh, <coughs> kung titignan ko ano yung decision ni Governor Gwen, it's a very, masabi natin, creative decision yon. Kasi <coughs> ang ginawa niya, nag-open siya ng dialogue. Before the litigation, may dialogue. So there are increasing degrees of tension and conflict. So magsisimula tayo sa lesser degree back kung kumakuha lang sa usapan, uh, pwede na 'yon. Kung di makuha sa usapan, di magli-legal 'yon. 'Di ba? Is it a greater degree of conflict? Halimbawa, ang ang example ko yung yung nangyari sa Kongreso na hearing na nandoon si Secretary Duque last week. Doon niya doon niya doon siya nag-announce na hindi na kailangan ng kwan, hindi na illegal ang mga doktor mag-prescribe ng ivermectin. Uh, kasi technically, sasamba na siya ng kaso, basically, ng ibang group. I know this. Pero with that, uh, hindi na kailangan pumunta doon sa kaso pa. Ano magkaso pa? Kasi binuksan niya na. And then he opened himself up to further dialogue with another group, with another perspective of scientists. Para sa akin, healthy yun para sa, sa DOH. Kasi sinabi ko na nga, regulatory capture yung DOH in the past months. Imagine, yung lumabas sa Senado, ah, sa Kongreso, mm. ang, ang, ang mga, most of the advisors are connected with pharmaceutical companies. Mm. Delikado yung kaya, in, 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 if you were the regulator, lalo na si Secretary Tuke, dapat he should hear all sides. Kasi when he makes a, a decision and tainted yung decision na science, He's going to plunge the country into destruction and chaos. I'll just give you an example na galing sa may Fauci emails, ha, which everybody should really read kasi 3,000 emails yan. Very clear na sinynchronize nila yung scientific opinion. Uh, ginawa nilang uh, falsified. In other words, ang un- paglabas nung, in the early days, may dalawang theory kung saan galing yung virus. Uh, all of them agreed galing sa Wuhan. Ang sinasabi ng grupo ni Fauci nang galing to sa natural evolution. Ang sabi ng bang scientists, hindi. Uh, uh, genetically engineered itong kwan, ang SARS-CoV-2. So, may in, sa, sa email, nakita natin, one of the top scientists na advisors ni Fauci, si Dr. Anderson, sinabi kay Fauci, you know, tiningnan namin to, we look at this, and it looks like meron ginawang en- engineered sul- i mean binayo engineered yung yung spike protein portion ng spike protein ng virus hindi pwedeng to explain ng evolution so immediately ang ginawa nila uh, inorganize ni Peter Dasak yung Eco Alliance na foundation na siya nag- naging conduit ni Fauci sa China kasi banda yung yung gain of function research yung pag, pag, magiging mas paggrabe pa sa mga virus, na ban na yun. So, chinanel nila sa Eco Alliance papunta sa Wuhan. E si Peter Dasak ang nag-orchestrate with Fauci's approval na lalabas ito as statements in Lancet, the most one of the most prestigious uh, medical journals, and sa, basically, sa Nature Medicine, another one. 
So basically, nalilis ang statement na ito yung ang itanggaling to sa, sa, sa nature. Hindi ito ginawa ng tao. That became the mainstream narrative for the last year ng mainstream press, sa social media, ito yung basis ng banning ng Facebook, ng YouTube, and so on, na itong, ito, yung, ito yung narrative. Yeah. Now, kaya mabigat yung mabigat tong Fauci emails kasi nakita doon yung maneuvering nila. So until finally, si Fauci who, who said in a, Senate, uh, in a Senate hearing, nag-perjury siya, nagsinungaling sa, sa Senate hearing, nahuli siya, sabi niya, wala kaming funding na gain of function research na mas pinapalakas namin ang tindi ng infection ng ng virus hindi kami nagfa-fan noon tapos ngayon nahuli siya ngayon wala na siya his court na kwento kasi perjury yun eh kami nagsinungaling ka sa Senate hearing ay nako pwede kang makulong yan so ganun yung matindi so that's why yung science na nandiyan kay Secretary Duque is tainted science kasi the same group na naggumawa nung yung bioweapon ay yung kwan yung sinasabi na nanggaling sa nature that same group they also started suppressing hydroxychloroquine yung early treatment na nandun na pinahiya pa ni Fauci si Trump doon sa harapan ng kwan sabi niya hindi yan totoo so but Naputulan ata tayo ng linya kay uh, uh, Nicanor uh, Perlas. At, pero yung kanyang pinapahayag, natin lang natin kumakabalik siya, no? pero kanyang pinapahayag na nagkakaroon ng mas malaking uh, repercussion. Or, uh, Ayun. Oh, yan. Okay. Yeah. Are, are you back yes. there, uh, Nick? Yeah I'm, back, yeah, I'm back on the air. Okay. Back on yeah, go ahead, please. <laughs> yeah, kaya ang, sina ang sinasabi ko lang na uh, first, and uh, ang, I think the first stage is dialogue, kundi sa makos of dialogue, then litigation. Yun, I think that will be, that will actually end this thing. And dito, panalong panalo sigurado si Governor Gwen Garcia pag nagkaroon ng litigation yan. And uh, it's, it's so clear sa constitution and the intent of, ang, ang talagang tunay na intensyon ng saligan batas natin is to devolve too much concentration of power yes. at us. And they, they define right. that. And that's why, that's yeah. why and local government code is the law that inter, that puts the, uh, is the law that puts into uh, actuality yung intentions ng constitution. Mm -hmm. So malakas yung batayan ni yeah. Governor Gwen. And I hope she doesn't, she doesn't suck them. Pero ang feeling ko sa kanya, hindi siya magsisurrender. Kasi imagine, nandun na, nandun na si Secretary Anyo, si Secretary Duque, yung mga senador. Yeah. Sabi niya, I love the, I mean, I support the president, but at the same time, I'm, I have a deep respect for law. You know, I mean, it's a very, it's a very balancing position. And is she's correct then? Talagang mali yung ginagawa ng IATF to force her to do something, especially if supported by the entire province, ang, ang provincial board, lahat ng mayors and all the congressmen, grabe supporta nito. So it's it's a major thing. Ang akin feeling dito, this is going to be a classic case, Toti. Mm. Ang mangyayari dito, in fact, I'm already speaking with mayors who are now looking to Cebu to do a similar thing. Ito yung pinakatakutan yeah. ni Secretary Anyo. This is exactly what will happen because ang mangyayari dyan, pag sinusuppress mo ang katotohanan, lalong lalabas yan in different right. ways. Hindi mo ma hindi mo masusuppress ang katotohanan. People mm. are born free, not slaves, to anything. And they're, yeah. as long as you maintain your scientific uh, stance and the law, panalo ka talaga rito. Yeah. Yeah. Maganda yung, ano eh, yeah. yung, yung, yung uh, na, napaliwanag na to avoid our one-man rule, kailangan talaga yeah, yun, yun. ang local government code. Sana nga, yes, sa programa nito at ating mga namumuno sa kanya-kanyang pamalan lokal ay gumising at uh, labanan ang pagdidikta ng uh, Central uh, Command or Central Committee dito sa ating dahil hindi naman tayo isang martial law. Kung hindi, tayo po ay malawakang uh, devolved country. At dahil nga dito, binibigyan yes, ng exactly. 
ang ating mga pamanalo lokal na magtago. Kaya nga, ni, sa tagal na natin itong tinatalakay at matagal na marami kumukontra dito sa COVID-19. At kinasabi nga daw yan na yan ay isang uh, scam lamang at hindi totoo. At mukhang nawawala tayo ng uh, gabay o direksyon. Tila ito nga ang isang isa sa mga paraan na para talagang umiral na ang sarili nating kakayanan na manatili na tayo maging malaya at, at iwasan na natin itong uh, iwasan natin itong pagdidikta ng isang mm-hmm. nabuk. Kailangan talaga palamin. Meron ba, tayo, meron ba ba kayong na, 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 nalalapitan ng mga ibang pamanang lokal maliban sa Cebu na, 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 na nalapitan kayo at gusto malaman kung ano pa pwede nilang gawin para lang itagod. Kasi marami sa ating mga lugar dito sa mga riyon, mababa lang talaga ang kahawaan at mababa lang talaga ang epekto. At sila yung nagiging, nagigipit nga lang sila. Hindi kailangan na silang Uh-oh. magbukas na ng todo kasi lang ipairali na niya kanilang ekonomiya sa kanilang sariling lugar. Mm-mm. Yeah, actually, uh, actually, Toti, marami ng mayors nag-iisip. Pinag- kasi sa, na, may, nag, nagbigay ako ng, uh, ng isang, may mga mayors, inibita ako maging speaker sa COVID. And uh, nagbigay ako ng presentation and then nagulat sila kasi m- most of the information bago. Kasi ang problema kasi Toti, oh, hindi yeah. nalalaman, karamihan ng news natin is censored and propaganda. Correct. In ganito, So ang mga mainstream news medyo hindi nalalabas yung mga st- story when they found out the truth then nalamulatan sila na in fact they have the final decision making based on section 105 and section yeah. 5 sa so, section 5 na hindi uh, hindi binanggit ni Gab Governor Gwen rules of interpretation sa local government code pag may katunggalian ang national tsaka yung local panalong local no matter what yun yung kwan. Okay. Uh, basta interpretation, right. bibigyan ng kwan. Yun yun. Pabigat. Ang nagulat ako actually sa language. Eh. Wow. So kaya, kaya talagang panalo si... Then when the mayors learned that, nag-isip na rin sila. So Correct. they're now looking to Cebu, what will happen there pag uh, something interesting happens in Cebu. I think magkakaroon sila ng lakas loob para sumulod na rin. Kasi toti sa kanila walang patay. Yeah yet they're subjected to may okay. isang yeah. infection doon, may ganong kagad. It's, it's irrational uh-huh. yung IATF sa local. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sisikap, sisikapin nito nitong likod na makapanayam natin siguro yung Liga ng mga gobernador. No? Liga of Governors, Liga yeah. of Provinces, and Liga yeah. of Municipalities. Na siguro pag makapanayam natin sila dito sa lakay na ito, uh, magkaroon sila ng pagkakataon na maliwanagan dito at siguro biya kayo ng panahon na makipagpanayam dito sa mga namumuno sa kanilang pamanang lokal. Para sa ganun, gumalaw-galaw naman itong galaw, gumalaw na galaw naman itong kilos ito at na maitigil itong pagdidikta ng isang ano. Lampas tayo sa isang oras. Babasahin ko muna sa iyo, Nick, ang mga ang mga nagbabas ng mga balita sa atin. Okay, sige. Ganda. Alright. Mula po kay Elizabeth Roca... Uh, Martel, Martel, good afternoon, sir. Uh, God bless the KDP. Uh, kay Jose Labim, mabati rin po. Ganon din si Marval, sabi niya, nice. So, nakita niya yung ano. Kay Rusty Imperial, meron talagang mga batas na ginagawa para ma-insure ang kaligtasan at kalayaan ng tao laban din sa gobyerno kung ito ay abusado na. From uh, Ras Mendoza, gandang hapon po, Sir Toti, eh, na mabuhay ka. From Marcelito, uh, Guatato, may limitation po ang Republic Act regarding IATF up to six months. Natakil na po yan ni Governor Gwen ng Cebu during the Senate hearing. Nasa head na ho of LGU po ang uh, mandato. Kaya may limitation ang IATF power. Tama lang po dahil we cannot give all the powers to only one person. Yes, sinasabi mo kanina, uh, Nick. No? Hindi po yan pinapahintulutan mm. ng ating konstitusyon. Uh, from Al- Alfred CDCPH talk with Duque especially on ivermectin in the cycle of PCR tests producing positive but false. From uh, Julio Jubilo, Mariano, ayaw ng gobyerno ng solusyon lalo ng si Duque. Gusto nila pahirapan ang nangusto at patayin ang mga tao kasabwat silang mga satanic kabal. Ngayon nabunyag na, na si Fauci sa panulokong ginawa sa buong mundo uh, tulong pa rin ang Pangulo. 
Ay, sorry, tulog pa rin ang Pangulo. Ngayon, ito naman po ay galing po kay uh, si Natura Mulier, bumabati na mabuhay sa atin, watching from Germany. Huh? Uh, from uh, uh, Castro, Teresa, siguro po ang situation sa NCR at sa ibang lugar ay di pareho. Maraming uh, brick-headed sa ibang lugar. Siguro sa Cebu, di ganun kalaki. Okay. From Zinea, Arcelia, God bless. Uh, good afternoon, Sir Tolti, always listening here in Hong Kong. Ang lahat ng protocol nila pang, pang, pang uh, patay ng tao. Samantalang sasabihin, save life. Pero ang nangyari ngayon, killing lives. Sabi nga, sabi ko na, Sir Tolti, na ang... Uh, ano to? Wala ako ah. Taga, uh, sabi nga, nga Sir Tolti, ang, ang mask at face shield na yan... Uh, pang, uh, pang pahina ng immune system natin. At ito naman si Anyo Galvez Lorenzo Palpak din. Isip, isipin mo na pati motor, pati motor lagyan ng uh, barrier uh, kung hindi ka <laughs> naman katangahan lahat. <laughs> From, uh, ito naman kailig kay Bastid Bastid Channel no? uh, Bag, Bag Teeth Channel Hello po mga katapuneros uh, galing naman po From John Cyril Onato, good afternoon Sir Toti and people here at KDP watching, listening here from Capiz. Isang isla naman po yan. Ano? Dapat sana kasuhan din ito ng criminal negligence and genocide itong sina Department of Health Duque at ang alipores niyang frontliners. Lalo na sila FDA, Domingo and the others sa bakuna ng kanilang pinopromote galing sa Big Pharma. From Angeline Lissing, uh, isang uh, magandang hapon Sir Toti, greetings in Hong Kong. Mabuhay po ang um, Toti Speaks in KDP and God bless you po. From Lourdes Kalk, hello and nice to hear from you, Sir uh, Professor Toti. Uh, my sympathy to your, your loss po. Thank you, Lourdes. Hindi uh, ko kayo napanood for many weeks just sa, sa mga nagsabotage ng uh, page ko po. Nakakasama na po si Pangulong Pautot. Uh, <laughs> from Melchor Ermino, good afternoon, Sir Toti, watching from Las Piñas, from uh, Steve Yu. Ang side effect ng bakuna, patay na. Patay, patay pag mahina ang uh, immune system natin. From uh, your Malto, good day po sa inyo, Sir Toti. And from Yoli Hermoso, good, good afternoon, KDP. Dapat ang kasuhan ng genocide si Duque, kaya kay, kaya, gaya kay Fauci, na crime against humanity, murder. Uh, kung walang kikilos na matataas na opisyal, paano na? Uh, kita, uh, kita, kita naman natin na sa US ngayon, wala nang mas simula noong June 16. So with that, we'd like to thank all of you for your uh, uh, support and endorsement of this program. We would like to hear your, your last few words, uh, Nick, for, for our viewers. Yeah, okay. Siguro ang, ang gusto ko lang talagang pad, padating dito, itong bakuna nito is a bioweapon. Hindi ito bakuna, it, especially Pfizer and Moderna. And according to the U.S. figures, depending kung 1% lang na report or 10%, ang mga patay na ngayon are anywhere from uh, 50 to 500,000 or 500,000 patay. Pero sa global sa global sa global basis is close to 1 million patay and 50,000 50 million ang sugatan. Some of many of them serious or serious hospitalization kasi nga a spike protein is actually a toxin and they're injecting 10, mil, 10 billion num, ang, in numbers, 10 billion spike proteins into your blood. And ito magkakaroon ng mga blood clot, yung mga effect all throughout the body. is distributed throughout the body. So, delikado ito. Ang problema dito, sinusuppress nila yung mga ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine, and mga safety early treatment. Kaya, ang suggestion ko sa lahat, kausapin nyo na yung doktor nyo sa area nyo. So, Ipa, ipa ko nyo na, pa-prescribe nyo ng ivermectin, especially sa mga matatanda. That's the way to actually stop this pandemic without any need for IATF. Nandiyan na actually, binuksan ni Duque for some reason yung gate. Si Secretary Duque, he allowed this. Kasi well, hindi, na mata, hindi na kayang sagutin ng mga advisors niya yung mga scientific facts na dinadala doon ng concerned doctors and citizens of the Philippines. They actually showing the massive meta studies for the one for the effect of ivermectin ginagamit nito large scale sa mga madaming bansa bagsak yung cases at death 
on the contrary, sa next uh, program, Toti, uh, ipapakita ko yung link. May link. May, we should watch this. Uh, it's a four-minute thing. Country after country, pabagsak na yung mga cases, tapos vaccination came, tapos umakyat yung kamatayan. This is a very dangerous... Ikwanto based on world data ito, existing data. Gumagano normally, bumabagsak, tapos all of a sudden nag-vaccine, nag-increase. Itong bakuna, delikado. Okay. Kaya, yeah. Dapat sa suggestion talaga sa nakikinig, huwag na kayo talaga magpapakuna. Sabihan niyo right. mga kaibigan niyo, pamilya niyo, huwag na pap- This was never meant to stop COVID-19, but it's okay. meant to actually kill you. Okay. Sige po, uh, abangan po natin yung susunod na linggo. Maraming salamat, uh, Nick. Uh, we, yeah. will, we can get uh, guests uh, from the League of uh, Provinces and the League of Cities, yung mga pinuno nila. Yes. Ito yung mas, ma- right. mas makabuluhang uh, talakayan. Para naman siguro gumalaw-galaw na tayo, maski sa mga pinuno na ating mamlanan. Yes. Kung so, papaalam, di naman po natin yung yeah. maganda. talakayan. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Abangan niyo po sa susunod na programa, Ang Sulog sa Pilipinas. Sandog sa inyo ni Ka-RJ. Abiliana, dito po sa ating mga channel. Mabuhay po Pilipinas, mabuhay po kayong lahat. Maraming salamat. Okay. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Roxanne.